Every day you have to fight for your life, right? But you don't really know it's a fight because it's called survival to your intellect, your understanding of life. So if, if surviving becomes a part of your life, when do living become a part of life? See, if we surviving, then how are we living? Right? Like, see, it's like you finding moments of joy in the midst of your incarceration. Right? See, every day you die. And every day you born again. Because once you sleep, you dead to the world. And once you wake up, you born into the world you were sleeping on. See what I'm saying? So when you look at it in increments like that, in, in small moments, then life don't be so big. It become moment to moment. You see? They call, well, what I call that is slowing my life down because my mind is so um, chaotic and it's been like that all my life that I, like I say, I compartmentalize things, right? So I put them in their proper place in my mind so in my moment to moment life, I can deal with it because when I'm out of that scene, I'm out of that moment. See, that's what I mean by when it, when I come home, I'm a father and a husband. When I get off the job, I no longer deliver mail. And I'm done with that. I made that day. See what I'm saying? So every day was a battle, not a struggle. See, because... If it was a struggle, I wouldn't have been strategic every day. See, so that's what I'm trying to show people. I'm saying you have to, well, you should see who took a long shot. Now let's let's break that down. See, I, I like, like I say, I, I like to define things because <clears throat> when you define something, you um with me, you know, I I can explain what I'm saying. Okay, a long shot is a venture. So understand, a venture has two sides. So remember I say mo I'm living my life moment to moment. Now my opponent came into my moment. See, so they, see, in their venture into my life, now let's look up venture, to proceed especially in the face of danger. See, so they proceeded, let's, let's break down proceed, to come forth from a source. See, so a liar came into my truth. Why wouldn't my truth consume the liar? Why would I start lying when I have a body of evidence? My life spoke for itself and I came out of my father's shadow into my own life. Right now that life is creating light for the world to see. Now, I'm saying how did I create the scene if I am light, right? The sun rises. Nobody causes it to rise nor fall. But how do light inside a human being not shine in the darkness that made, that cracked the shell? that made the light come out. So if Jesus say, I am the truth, the light, and the way, 
when the light be the light that Saul saw that converted him to Paul, right? And then the way that he heard Jesus live then changed the way that he lived. So this is what I'm trying to show you all. Well, how would Jesus look in the flesh? See, you only know him through the scriptures. But but now, why are you um, distorting my mental light with your mental confusion? Because if you're talking about me from the scriptures, then why can't I be showing you in the scriptures? I don't know the scriptures. So how did I base my life off of something I'm using in self-defense against you? See, to, so I can proceed. Now let's look up that now. To come forth from a source. See, so my truth came from me. I'm the source of my truth. A generative force. See, I generated this force. See, now, nah, but it was generated from a force. See, so when two forces collide, one has to overtake the other, We or we suspend it, right? It's two, and everybody's stuck in that force. See, because now we like magnets now. See, that's why I'm telling y'all generations, you can't come into a power struggle and pick a side because you could pick the wrong side. You see what I'm saying? But the truth has already consumed the liar. The liar's power is what's the magnet. See, the money, that's the draw, right? See, people, ignorant people, won't even know an intelligent battle is taking place until they see what they see as valuable in it, right? So when the money come, here come the vulture. See? Here come the buzzard. Here come the beast. See, here come all of that root of evil because they the money is now pulling that root of evil out of my truth. See? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, when they took the truth, I mean, well, well, when they took the property and they took the money, they took evil. But see, you have to be able to see it, but you got to be wealthy enough to understand it. See, wealth, okay, let's see, let's wealth. See, see, you, see, if a person tell you what's, what, what wealth is, then they then make you see it their way right but wealth an abundance of valuable material possessions or resources see or resources so money is a material look relating to derived from or consisting of a manner especially physical see money is physical you can put it in your hands you can put it in your pocket see it's physical you can hold it but knowledge, right, is a resource, look, a source, see, of supply or support. See, that's a mental resource. So how, how would my mental resources go bankrupt when I can read, write, and understand? Now, they got to keep um, their, their resources is physical, so they have to keep producing it. See, see what I'm saying? So now their debt is rising, but my truth has set me free from their, their rising debt. That's why I'm showing y'all Amendment 14, Section 4, says that my company, nor my family, nor my friends, nor my associates, nor the Navy, nor the uh, Marines, nor the Army, nor the Air Force, nor the uh, uh, Coast Guard. See, those are my family, right? We are not responsible for the debt of these fake electors that you have elected since August 12, 2008 at 10.40 in the morning. That's the crime. We're not responsible for that debt. 
because on August 12, 2008 at 10.40 in the morning, I became a public defender for this generation. See? And now you got two forces in court and I'm saying, well, hey, if my truth bought this day for me, right? Then how can the sinner own anything in this day if my truth purchased it yesterday? And this is what I was trying to tell my friends. I'm saying, when do sovereignty have value? When you believe it, who are you? See, but I know that the law, I'm telling you what law made me sovereign enough to pay today's debt. My truth has made me sovereign enough to pay the debt. But you think I'm crazy and I'm saying, well, I've written over a hundred books that my enemy is stealing. But you, my friend, you my family, you supposed to know me, but I'm saying, well, how would you know me after I read a hundred books? How would you know me if you knew me before I read a hundred books, right? Now, how would you know me after I wrote a hundred books if you didn't know me before I read a hundred books. See, I'm evolving with every book I write as I read the reference of who I am. See what I'm saying? Like when I read the Bible, I read it differently than you read it because I don't ask the Bible about Jesus, I asked the Bible about me. Now you say, well, how you ask the Bible? Because I look it up on my phone like I look up these definitions. So all you got to do is put in who you are in the Bible and it'll come back who your opponent is. See, that, that's what I'm telling y'all. Like when I reference the Bible, I'm not referencing myself per se i'm referencing the scene i'm in see because if you live out of the bible then you that's your manuscript that's what that's that's the role you playing so you the minister you the you the you the preacher you the you the high priest you the scribe you the elders in this scene right so in this scene, I am he, I am him. I am the one that's in court, but I am now giving you the message of me in court. Now that's confusing people because you listen to somebody tell you about somebody else. See, but I'm me. So of course I'm gonna talk first person, second person, third person, for per, it's all me. So why would I say he in my testimony and not say me if it's my testimony? So that's where you being confused because I'm talking about me, but, but I'm talking about a crime that's being committed against me and I'm teaching you what to do if you were me. But see, Jesus would have to teach you with nails in his hands and feet. So how could he teach you how not to get nails in your hands and your feet if that's what he had in his hands and his feet? So what he showed you, if you're looking at it from the perspective I'm looking at it is, no matter what the cost to love you, he was willing to pay it. And that's what I'm telling my wife and my son and my daughter and my grandmother and my cousins and my friends and family and the Navy and the Marines and the Air Force and the Army and the, and the Coast Guard. I'm saying, you know, I'm saying 
before I give up on my word, I would go to hell and back because my word is all I have.